Do you ever feel like you're experiencing something for a second time, despite being 100% sure that you haven't ever done it before? You're not alone. The majority of us have experienced deja vu at some point in the past. It's that odd sense of familiarity where you're suddenly and inexplicably overcome with a feeling that you've done this thing that you're doing right now before. It could be the layout of the furniture, the smell of a room, perhaps something that's just been said. It's happened before. Welcome to Deja Vu. Most people retain some kind of insight while experiencing deja vu. That is the awareness that what you're experiencing right now is inappropriate, leading to a simple sense of wonder at what's just happened, usually resulting in the kind of, whoa, I've just had deja vu, and telling everybody around you before just getting on with your day normally and forgetting about it. In its simplest form, deja vu, or the French for already seen, is a clash of two opposing forces the overwhelming sense of familiarity with the knowledge that this feeling is inappropriate. Back in 1983, Nepp described the experience as any subjectively inappropriate impression of familiarity of a present experience with an undefined past. The mystery of deja vu has lasted hundreds of years. Before we had a basic understanding of the brain and the role that certain areas within it play, this was often perceived as paranormal. People who are experiencing deja vu were often thought as having premonitions or receiving prophecies from higher beings. First references to the phenomenon can be found back as far as the mid 19th century. However, at the time, Mainstream psychology wasn't too interested in the phenomenon, labeling it as a symptom without psychological function. With academia being focused upon the study of behavior, huge inroads were never really made into the mainstream cognitive research into this. Still to this day, little progress has been made towards clarifying the nature of such memory illusions. Deja vu may well be the most well-known anomaly of memory, other than just being generally forgetful that tends to happen to everyone. As a result, few others are ever mentioned, but they're definitely experienced. Have you ever walked into a room and seen something familiar, but it's felt distinctly unfamiliar? That is jamais vu, or never seen. A word or a phrase got stuck on the tip of your tongue? That's presque vu or almost seen. Déjà vécu means already experienced, and is a lesser known but similar phenomenon in which a person can't tell that a situation is new, believing that they're reliving a familiar experience. For example, going on holiday to a completely new destination, but thinking that you've definitely been there before even though you haven't. This goes to show that deja vu is not the only memory associated trick your brain plays on you. Certain groups have even attempted to subcategorize the deja vu phenomenon, producing terms such as deja entendu, already heard, and deja visite, already visited, depending on the general situation and experience that this is related to. It's important to say that experiencing deja vu and its variants is very rarely a sign of anything sinister. The majority of us experience it at least once in our lifetimes, if not more, and we don't have any issues or impairments afterwards, which is why it's classed as non-pathological or not a disease. It's only a concern when it's prolonged or really, really frequent. In order to understand the potential theories surrounding deja vu and its variants, we need to take a quick look into the anatomy of the brain that's involved, particularly those areas that encode and store our memories. Now, we've previously covered general memory and it's linked up above in this card here. Despite this, it's thought that the main area responsible for deja vu is predominantly the medial temporal lobe a region synonymous with memory storage and recollection. The cerebellum and prefrontal cortex are also really important. The cerebellum plays a role in the creation of implicit or procedural memories and classical conditioning, such as blinking in response to someone clicking their fingers in front of your face, for example. The prefrontal cortex, meanwhile, is involved in the processing and retention of information. Working together with the temporal lobe, these areas are synergistic in the voluntary recall of different types of memories. So how does all this come together? One theory is that of brain glitching. In this theory, deja vu is thought to come about when the brain's memory circuits fire slightly out of sync 
an idea supported when we remember that frequent and prolonged deja vu is a commonly reported symptom of temporal lobe epilepsy. And it can also present in psychiatric illness with neurodegenerative changes. The theory is that when your brain is creating short-term memories, it makes you feel as if you're recalling longer-term ones, hence the familiarity. Away from this neuroanatomy, however, things get a little bit hazier. Two other common theories are that of split perception and memory recall. The first suggests that deja vu occurs when we see something after barely noticing it the first time. This is founded on the idea that even if we barely notice something, our brain still begins forming memories of it. This is why the second time we see something, even though we think that we've never seen it before, chances are we might have actually subconsciously seen it before and we're recalling it. Memory recall theory, on the other hand, suggests that we experience deja vu as a response to situational similarities to a past experience. Whilst the sense of subconscious recall makes something seem familiar, we simply do not remember the specifics and cannot recall why this is. Are there any concrete conclusions that we can draw from this? Unfortunately, due to the nature of this strange phenomenon, the experiences that we have are subjective and retrospective or looking back. So with so many possible different confounders to the research, this makes formal deja vu assessment extremely difficult. For example, some research claims deja vu to be experienced more by those who travel frequently and by those who watch more films, for example, but less by those who are older. Similarly, people who are under really high levels of stress report deja vu type symptoms happening far more often to them. There's even a story of a man who taking amantadine, which is an old influenza medication, and phenylpropylamine, which is a decongestant, together realized that he was experiencing so much deja vu that he finished the full course of medication just so he could go back to his doctor and report his findings. All in all, like much of neuroscience, deja vu retains its air of mystery. But nonetheless, you can't help but feel a sense of wonder at the experience of it all. Have you ever experienced deja vu in the past? Have you managed to figure out a reason for why it happens to you? Why don't you drop us a comment down below in the box and let us know. And don't forget to drop us a like as well. See you at the next video.